All right, so we are, we are talking about T cells. So this topic today, which we are talking on the T cell, is the journey of the T cell. This is such an interesting story. The journey of a T cell from during its various phases of life. So T cell is such an interesting thing that it is born in the bone marrow, then it goes to the thymus for training or, um, or, or getting educated about how to handle various immune uh, situations or antigens or pathogens. After getting training and, and the training is quite um, intensive, if it cannot pass that training it is killed. So some of the T cells do uh, you know make out of the thymus without getting killed and are not the, the right recruits and they start um, damaging our own body, but that is uh, causing autoimmune diseases, but that should not happen. Ideally, in theoretically in the right way is that when the T cells are produced in the bone marrow, they go to the thymus, they get trained over there and if they cannot pass the exams there, they are killed and then the remaining T cells, they come out and they live in the lymph nodes in the body and then over there they wait for the antigens which they are specific for and once they have found those antigens, then they go to the area where the infection is, where those pathogens are present, where those antigens are present and then they go and uh, the fight there and finally they perish and they, they go away. So this is a very interesting journey and how does this happen? When a T cell is produced in the bone marrow, why does it go to thymus? Why not go to lymph node and just sleep there? Or why, do, why not directly go in the tissue and just live in the tissue? Why to go and live in the uh, in the lymph node, but it is very specific. Once a T cell is produced, so let us say this is the bone marrow. So this is let us say femur, so this is bone or iliac crest or something. So this is the bone T cell is produced, a young T cell is produced, fine, it is in the blood. Now when it is in the blood, so if I make the circulatory system like this and somewhere I say this is the heart. So when this T cell enters the circulatory system, from there should not it just go and let us say here we have a muscle, should it not it just go and start living in a muscle, start acting there or should it not let us say we have thymus here. Should it not just go and start living in the thymus or let us say we have a lymph node here, this is a lymph node, why not just there, why not in a tissue, why not in gut, why not in, in brain, why not in eyes, why not in cardiac tissue, somewhere. T cell after born, after getting released in the blood, the first step T cell always goes to thymus. For its, for its education. From the thymus when it comes out, once again the whole world is open to this, once again the whole body is open to this, it can go anywhere. But once it comes out of the thymus, it goes to the lymph node, lives there, that is a home for the T cell. Once it comes out of the lymph node, it can either go to another lymph node or it can go to an infected tissue. So I would just say 3, infected tissue. So let us say there are some pathogens here, um, intracellular, extracellular, whatever. So there are some pathogens here and the T cell would come here and work. So what causes a T cell to go to thymus or to lymph node or to the tissue? So that is what we are going to accomplish with this lecture today. The um, use of this is very important from a testing point of view and then from a practicing point of view that the cells which are produced in the test you can encounter questions like what happens if we have VLA4 and VLA5 antigens, what does that mean or what happens if we do not have let us say LPAM1 or let us say we do not have L selectins 1 or the L selectins are damaged or ICAM1 is damaged or LFA is damaged, what happens if there is a genetic problem, these proteins are damaged, what is the effect on the immune system. So most of these things are going to be discussed here and these would define where the T cell goes. So now to start this topic, understand this that 
we know when two cells adhere to each other, the proteins which cause them to be adherent to each other are normally called cell adherence molecules, cell adhesion molecules, CAMs, CAM, C A M, cell adhesion molecule. I hope you know this from the histology. So, when the cells are joined together, they are joined together by the proteins, these proteins are normally called cell adhesion molecules. These are also called ligands. What is a ligand? Ligand is really nothing. So, let us say this is one rope and this is the other rope and then we tie them together, we ligate them. So, ligand really means something which can connect two things. So, ligands, these cell adhesion molecules are usually ligands. In the case of ligands, normally what you have is two things. So, let us say this is a, this is a cell 1 and this is a cell 2. So, cell 1 and cell 2. So, if these cells have ligands, what you would see is that one cell has one type of protein and the other cell expresses the other type of proteins, but these two proteins can then combine with each other. These two proteins can then ligate with each other. So, these are ligands. So, this is ligand 1, this is ligand 2 and these are corresponding ligand for each other. So, now we know that the cells are connected, they are connected through the cell adhesion molecules. We also know that those molecules which are causing the adhesion, these are called ligands as well. So, we have to now understand what happens here. So, it is a very simple thing. When a newborn cell, T cell is produced, it expresses the proteins on its surface or it expresses the ligands on its surface which are only specific for thymus cells. That means, thymus cells in turn also express some proteins which are only specific to them. For example, in this case, what would that be? So, fibronectin, fibronectin and laminin of thymus. So, these are extracellular matrix proteins very common, they are present all over the body. The fibronectin and laminin of the thymus connect with, so if I make a T cell here, if I make a T cell here and this T cell is not even a naive T cell, this T cell at this time is called a thymocyte, a thymocyte. What is this T cell? This T cell is what is born from the bone marrow, came out in the blood, is going around the body, it is not sticking anywhere. Have you seen the Velcros where these two things stick like this, let us say. So, this thing, so let us say this is a T cell, comes out, goes out throughout the tissue and does not attach anywhere. Where will it attach? It would only attach to the cells in the or to the tissue in the thymus. And how does it attach there? This naive, this T cell, I do not want to call it naive, this T cell, this is this thymocyte expresses VLA 4, 5 and 6, very late antigen 4, 5 and 6. Why is it called very late antigen? So, when, when researchers are observing various cells and various proteins appear on their surface and then they disappear, these proteins, they, they mark them as cluster of designations or as as receptors or as late antigens. So, uh, late antigen just means something which got produced after, after some days. So, VLA 4, 5 and 6 are the proteins which are expressed on the surface of the thymocyte. Thymocyte, I am not calling it naive. A naive T cell is a T cell which has been trained in the thymus and has come out, that is a naive T cell. It, the naive T cell has not yet become activated, it has yet not seen an antigen to work with. So, it is naive, it, it does not know what to do. This is a newborn T cell, it is a thymocyte which is going to be inside the thymus, it is going to go in the thymus, get educated there, it is going to express 4, 5 and 6. Now, VLA 4 and 5, remember they both 4, F O U R, 5, F I V E, they both express, they both have the the F in the beginning. Here fibronectin also has F in the beginning. So, what happens is that 